Hello everyone, welcome to the rcprinter.com YouTube channel. I'm your host Jordan Visco. Today we're talking about this guy right here, which is the 3D Sets Rancher, which is a 3D printable remote control Jeep. And we're going to talk about what's awesome about this build and what maybe some of the quirks are and help you decide if you should build one for yourself. Remember, if you're looking for cool RC projects to build, if you're looking for kits, parts, or help, check us out at rcprinter.com. <laughs> Okay, so first, a quick intro on 3D sets and who they are. Uh, there are a couple of guys from the Czech Republic named Andrzej Slavik and Yuri Lorenczyk, and they wanted to create premium 3D printable models um, that weren't your standard flower pots and vases and things like that that you can find on Thingiverse. Uh, they are RC enthusiasts, so the decision to make high detailed RC cars came really easy to them. Their first models were released in 2020, starting with this guy, which is the Rancher. And uh, they made a few different designs of the Rancher. One, uh, this one, which was the original one, and then they made a uh, four-door one, and they made ones with different uh, hardtops. And uh, then they came out with the Landy, which is uh, like a scale model of a Land Rover. And they made a few different models of that one. And then recently, in 2021 here, they came out with one called the Buggy, which is a 3D printable Volkswagen Beetle Dune Racer, uh, which is pretty sweet as well. So they also have a bunch of different accessories that you can print for all their models. You can print things like racks for the top, you can print winches, you can print tow hooks, you can print side rails, you can print um, snorkels, you can print gas tanks, you can print people for the inside. So they have a whole bunch of different models that you can print. And some of them are free and some of them are paid. These though, the, the actual base model themselves run about 35 to $40 depending on the one you choose. And that's in US. And that's a little steep for most uh, 3D models, but when you consider all the stuff that's going into these guys, like motors and um, servos, speed controllers, uh, all the screws you have to buy, all the bearings, uh, receivers, uh, radios, everything you need for a 3D printed RC car, um, you're easily going to be spending a few hundred dollars, so the extra 40 bucks you spend on the model uh, doesn't really break the bank. Now if you're looking for something that's a little bit cheaper and a little bit easier, they did come out with a free model uh, in some sort of a marketing uh, arrangement with Prusa Printers. Uh, they developed this guy right here which is the little Landy Mini, and it is not remote control. It does have a 3D printed suspension, and it's got a little uh, you know, working hood there with a little motor inside, and uh, these tires here can be printed out of TPU, and it's got seats in there, and I printed this one for my daughter, and she just loves it playing around with her dolls. Um, so I highly recommend, if you're not quite sure if you wanna bite off something like this guy, start with something like this, it's free. Uh, you just need some screws to put it together. It's a, still a quite a, a good model, a detailed model, and it's a fun build. Okay, so next we're going to talk about printing this bad boy. Um, printing is actually quite easy. Um, if you have a Prusa Mark III S, they actually have G-code files ready for you. So all you do is upload those um, either through Octoprint or on a SD card right to your Prusa printer and uh, load your right filament and away you go. For the rest of us, they have 19 pre-made build plates for the vehicle um, that are all pre-arranged with all the parts that you need on them and they're arranged and color coded so that you can print all of your chassis pieces together in one color and then you can print all your body pieces together in another color and you can make, mix and match like that and get the uh, color scheme you're looking for. Now the very first build plate is going to include a calibration tool and you're going to want to make sure that you do that one first and uh, fit your bearings into it and make sure that your bearings fit. Uh, and that's just going to save you a lot of trouble down the road if you're having any sort of uh, calibration issues with your printer. Now for filament, everything can be printed in PLA. They recommend Prusament PLA, but any good quality PLA will work. And it's going to take about two to three weeks of print time to get it all done, and you're going to use at least two and a half kilograms of filament, uh, so be prepared. Now the 19 jam-packed build plates actually include 225 different model pieces, 
that are all going to need to be screwed together with 550 different screws. So be prepared for a serious build. The build is quite fun if you like that kind of thing. From the complicated gearbox, to the chassis, to the suspension, to the body, every part of this model is really, really well done. There were quite a few times when I was building this when I just had to sit back to myself and think, wow guys, that's such a unique way of solving that problem. Well done. Uh, you've done a, a really great job. Putting together this model is quite fun if you love building models, but it's also quite complicated and it would be a bit daunting if you've never built anything like this before. Uh, there are so many tiny pieces that screw together with little M2 screws, it's kind of mind bending. Uh, and like I said, with 550 different screws and uh, you know 28 bearings in this model, it is going to get complicated. Luckily, they've done an amazing job on the design and there is no gluing whatsoever in this model. So if you make a mistake and you put something together wrong, it's really easy to take it apart and uh, fix whatever it is that you did. Also, I have to say the instructions are quite good, far better than any other um, model that I've built so far. There were a few times when I did struggle with a section here or there, but I was always able to figure it out within a few minutes of work. The instructions walk you through uh, the entire build process from start to finish, so you can do it, but it is a 72 page build manual. So this is not something that you're gonna be able to do in a night. It's gonna take a couple weeks of nights in order to get something like this completed. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the body. Um, it's not like a normal RC car where you have like a chassis underneath and then you like put a Lexan body on top and you clip it down. The body is much more a part of the build here and actually adds to the structural integrity of the vehicle. Now, as you can see, the details here are insane. Uh, you know, they've gone so far as to add windshield wipers, there's hinges, working hinges, you know, on all of the doors. There's uh, little clasps here as well that allow the door to just snap shut. Same thing on the, on the back here. You know, this is where you access your battery. Um, the seats are super well done. The dash is well done. You know, the wheels here um, have these little, little uh, details there which make the wheels look super cool. Uh, it's got lights, it's got a gas cap. You know, it's got mirrors. The mirrors move. You know, not only did they create doors that open and close, but the doors themselves are multiple pieces. There's the door, there's the hinges, there's the door handle, and then there's the inside of the door here as well, which is a completely separate piece. To access the on-off controls for the vehicle, there's actually a, um, a little center hatch right there, and you flip this up, and your on-off switch resides right in there, which is pretty neat. There are no real lights. Uh, the lights on here are fake, um, which is kind of unfortunate. Something this detailed, it would be pretty cool if it did include lights, but I think once you get into that kind of electronics, it starts to get a bit daunting for, for people. And it does make the design a little bit simpler. The windscreen here, this is actually just plastic um, that's squashed between uh, a rear frame and a front frame. And uh, this I just use an old piece of packaging material that came from Amazon one day. So I don't have a roof on mine, I just have um, this roll cage here. And it is actually quite a strong uh, uh, roll cage as well, and you can actually hold the vehicle up by the rack. And I love that the motor actually resides under the hood, where a motor is supposed to go. And uh, it's nice and clean in there, and uh, looks pretty sharp. So the motor is a 27 turn uh, 540DC motor and it has a lot of power uh, when paired with a battery and uh, it calls for just a 2S LiPo battery. And to harness that motor's power, uh, they have this amazing gearbox in there, which to me was uh, the most complicated and coolest part of the build. And it actually includes gears for six different steps to step the power of the motor down and deliver tons of torque out to those drive shafts. Now the model is four wheel drive and the front and rear differentials are locked. So all the wheels will always spin at the exact same rate, which makes it really great for crawling over obstacles and climbing up hills. And the result, what you get here, is an RC model that is more similar to a crawler than it is like an RC basher. And it's something that you're gonna have a ton of fun with and you'll be able to go lots of places with, but not something that's gonna be super fast. If you're looking for a really fast model, then this is not the one for you.
Now, the drivetrain is actually where I've had most of my problems on the vehicle, and I'll show you here. Um, it's actually where I've had the most trouble and the most reprints is actually these pieces in here in the drivetrain. So everything from these drive shafts to these joints um, and then the gears inside here as well. And the reason that I had so much problem with those is uh, I didn't watch my print settings close enough when I was doing them. I printed them in PETG, which is not recommended. So don't print in PETG. And I printed with just regular two walls and standard like 20% infill. And when I've reprinted all these pieces in here, I printed them I think with like six walls and 100% infill just to make them, you know, just to be absolutely certain that I was getting the maximum strength and durability out of those pieces. And I haven't had any problems with them since. So in terms of suspension, this model can accommodate 80 to 100 millimeter shocks. Uh, you can see here it is quite spongy and uh, you can actually get, you know, quite a lot of um, offset with all wheels except one off the ground there and probably like three or four inches off the ground. So um, that's quite good for, you know, a 3D printed model. And another cool thing about this suspension is that all of the ball joints, and there's a lot of them, you know, underneath here, all of these arms have a ball joint on each side. Uh, the steering arms all have ball joints on them. Those are all 3D printed ball joints. Um, and I've had zero problems with any of them, and I've actually started using 3D printed ball joints on my other RC models, and I have had zero issues with any of them as well. So good to know that um, you know these 3D printed uh, ball joints can work quite well. So a couple things I'd like to mention about this model. Um, you know there are some things about it that I don't love. Uh, one of those is that it can be like once it's all together, it can be a bit hard to fix if you break something. Um, there are a ton of pieces, like I said, 225 pieces and 550 screws. So when you break something, uh, everything kind of goes together in order. And if you have to tear it apart, you, it can take quite a while to unravel something and, and take all those pieces apart to get to, uh, whatever's broken. Uh, you know, I'm kind of cringing at the idea that someday I might have to do something uh, with that gearbox, that amazing gearbox, because it's right in the very center of the model, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to pretty much tear the model apart in order to get at that and reprint it. Another thing I don't really love about this um, is how the wheels are done. I do, I do love the wheels. Um, you know, I think they look super cool. Um, but the hubs on them are really small. I don't know the exact size. I'm going to say, like, probably, like, eight millimeters maybe, and a normal uh, RC car of this size would have about a 12 millimeter hub. Um, and I think it just, it provides like more wobble in the wheel as it's driving than I'd like to see. Also, these screws here that hold the wheels on, they're just screwed right into plastic, uh, which doesn't allow you to get them super tight. You can't really torque them down. Um, and what most other RC models that I'm seeing have is bolts that come out and then you put a lock nut on the end and that allows you to cinch it up as tight as you want. So uh, that would be something I think could be improved on the model in the future. So in conclusion, um, this is a super fun model that I really enjoy building. I enjoy building models as much if not more than I enjoy driving them. But should you build it? So if you want a super well designed, well thought out, 3D printable model uh, that is going to be very complicated, meticulous, uh, is going to have, you know, uh, require a, a lot of time, a lot of effort to get it done, but when you're done, you're going to have an amazing looking vehicle. Uh, you're looking for something that is, you know, a bit more of a rock crawler than something that's going to go super fast, uh, something that's going to be able to climb over obstacles, and something that's going to be able to go anywhere, then yeah, this is definitely the model for you. If you're looking for something that is highly customizable, something where you can add some racks, add some stuff on the racks, maybe pull a trailer or something like that, then yeah, this is this is something that is um, going to be right up your alley. However, if you're not looking for a big build project and uh, something that's going to eat up a ton of your time, I recommend maybe going with something a little simpler like an open RC car. So thanks for your time. I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, please like or subscribe. And as always, uh, if you're looking for cool RC projects to build, kits, parts, or help, check us out at rcprinter.com.